We've now reached a point in scientific development where we can simply invent materials that don't exist naturally on Earth. A team of scientists responsible for this amazing discovery has managed to put together a substance that has only been found in meteorites so far. This material, called tetraeonite, is a mixture of two metals, nickel and iron. Sure, we have plenty of nickel and iron right here on our planet, but not in this precise combination. The difference is that when these two metals travel through space in meteorites, they get cooled down over the millions of years of their journey. You may think of a meteorite in this case as a floating washing machine, only this one never stops working. It keeps spinning materials over and over again at a very low temperature. These conditions were responsible for creating tetrateanite. But why is this material so important? It turns out that this unique substance is extremely useful for creating magnets, not just any kind, high-end ones, also called permanent magnets. They're used in a lot of expensive machinery these days, for example, in electric vehicles or even in space shuttles. You might know that magnets are crucial pieces in many devices we use today, especially in those that need to transform electrical power into some sort of movement. Things like electric clocks, whose hands need to constantly keep moving to tell the time, or cars, which need some sort of power to spin their wheels in order for the vehicle to move. The problem is most of these magnets are pretty easy to produce and quite cheap, but they're not very powerful. In advanced devices like space shuttles, we need stronger magnets. They need to resist extreme temperatures and amounts of pressure for long periods of time. Let's take space shuttles, for instance. Whatever we send out into space needs to be as low maintenance as possible. Why? Because every time a device needs fixing, it'll need to make a trip to Earth and back. This can get extremely expensive and even dangerous especially when astronauts are also involved. For a magnet to become permanent, it needs to contain something special, rare earth. It might sound like some sort of a magical amulet from a fantasy book, but the explanation is pretty simple. Rare earth elements, also called Re, are a set of 17 metallic elements. They're featured in the periodic table. You know, that thing in chemistry class that contains a lot of elements? most of which you've never heard of? Regardless of your feelings towards high school chemistry, these elements are super important since they're used in more than 200 products these days. I bet it's the first time you heard you have these rare elements in your house. Let me name a few devices. Your cell phone, the hard drive of your computer, your flat screen monitor, or even your TV. You might even have these elements in your car if you have an electric or hybrid one. Most of the time, these elements are only found in real small amounts in these devices. But without them, such gadgets wouldn't work. That's where tetrateanite might come in handy. It's a pretty good candidate for replacing these rare earth elements. Why do we need to replace them in the first place? Well, for starters, because they're pretty rare, obviously, but also because they're too expensive to extract and process. Most of the time, rare elements aren't found in nature on their own. They are combined with other elements, and taking them apart needs a lot of time and effort. If this new element could be synthetically developed in labs, it might mean less hassle in the future to develop new and more advanced pieces of technology. Scientists have also just invented the world's blackest black, or the darkest material on Earth. Let's call it that. In fact, it's a pigment that can easily confuse your eyes. You can't determine its shape and form when looking at it. It's called Vanta Black, and it's made out of carbon nanotubes. They absorb 99.96% of all light that hits their surface. For comparison, any other standard black surface, like that of your hoodie or a wall, or anything else you can imagine, can absorb anywhere between 95% and 98% of light rays. It's easy to see why people describe this material as a black hole. It's cool to look at, sure, but I don't think you'd look good in a piece of clothing covered in Vanta Black. That's because the shape of the human body would become invisible altogether. 
and you'd end up looking two-dimensional. There's a whitest white in our world too, but it can be found naturally. It has a lot to do with a pretty cool insect. The Cyphocalus beetle, it is considered a pest in Southeast Asia, but its white scales can be brighter than any other white surface found in nature. Scientists have carefully studied this creature and invented a new type of super white coating. The substance found in it is called chitin, a chemical compound closely related to glucose. It reflects light very well. Most of the white products we find in stores today, like sunscreen or toothpaste, have special particles that reflect a lot of light. But in most of them, these particles are titanium dioxide or zinc oxide. Do you want to know how powerful the new white pigment is? If you've ever had to paint a wall white, you know you need to apply a couple of layers to make it look crisp. If you paint it with this super white coating, you'll only need a coating as thin as a strand of hair. This chemical isn't available for commercial use yet, but once scientists finish testing it in different environments, we might begin to see it in cosmetics or even food. A team at the University of Chicago has invented a type of plastic that acts more like a metal. At least if we look at one characteristic, and that's the ability to conduct electricity, the researchers don't have a clear theory as to why this works so well. But the molecules in this unusual plastic are mixed together in a way that conducts electricity similar to how metals do. Before this discovery, metals were the only material used in circuits. In order for electric currents to travel in a certain device, it needs to go through a certain material. Regular plastic doesn't allow electricity to run through it smoothly. That's why plastic is most of the time used as an insulator. Its purpose is to protect us from getting electrical shocks when touching an electric device. This discovery is important because it might lead us to even more materials that conduct electricity but are easier to shape. As opposed to plastic, metals are generally more rigid and need special treatment to function properly inside an electrical circuit. How about an artificial material that acts as if it's alive? Cornell University specialists have invented this one too. So what does this material do? For starters, it has the three key components of every living organism. Metabolism, self-assembly, and organization. It's not alive though, despite looking like moving slime. In fact, it's made out of special polymers, which are organized in chains and can grow and change in size. They basically give this material its own DNA-like properties. The researchers have called the whole project DASH. A series of chemicals involved in making this material can turn its outside environment into energy, just like our bodies do. Scientists are not looking to create cyborgs resembling humans. Don't worry, this material is not technically alive, but they are looking to expand their current research into creating materials that can regenerate and, as such, reduce waste. The information it comes pre-programmed with, that's similar to human DNA, is kind of a preset instruction sheet. It lets the material know how to behave and what to do when under pressure. Scientists working on this project hope that one day, these types of materials can even be self-replicating. Do you know that our planet has scars? One of them is located in North America. The scar can tell us many cool things about the history of Earth, but the most interesting thing is that it could change the appearance of our continents and break our world. But for some reason, this scar hasn't done it yet. And that's not even the most interesting part. The coolest thing about this scar is that it might hold a giant source of clean, cheap energy. So let's go to Kansas to find out what it is. So 1.1 billion years ago, a giant rift formed in the crust of our planet on the territory of the modern U.S. Midwest. It's called Broken Heart. This giant crevice is filled with solidified magma, and from afar, it looks like a real scar. But how did it show up? Broken Heart was an ancient rift valley, a huge geological fault 
forming elongated hollows in the Earth's crust. It occurred because tectonic plates had moved apart. It's like the details of a jigsaw puzzle that suddenly started to separate. At that moment, thousands and even millions of tons of magma spilled out from the depths of our planet. That event looked like a real apocalypse, lasting about 100,000 years. But then it stopped, and scientists don't know why. If the rifting process had lasted longer, then most likely the continent of North America would look different today, or it wouldn't even exist at all. Right now, this fault looks like a giant horseshoe that stretches from Kansas north to Lake Superior and south to Michigan. But some studies indicate that the fault may be larger and extend even further south. And the width of the fault might equal the width of the Red Sea. After the rifting stopped, the entire valley got covered with hills and trees. The fault itself is covered with a thick layer of sedimentary rocks, so it's quite difficult to track. The most noticeable parts of the rift are in the Lake Superior area. Now everything looks calm and beautiful, but in the past, there were fountains and rivers of lava, earthquakes, a boiling pot on a planetary scale. All that remains of it are deposits of basalt, a dark, dense rock that forms from cooled lava. There was so much basalt that its weight pushed the valley deeper and deeper into the Earth's crust. Even when the eruptions and rifting stopped, the valley continued to sink because of the huge mass of the sediment. Then, massive sections of the Earth's crust on both sides of the valley began to contract, and the pieces of the puzzle slowly started to come together. This led to a large-scale ejection of volcanic material upward, and along with basalt, deposits of copper rock appeared in the valley. People mined this copper for about 8,000 years until the end of the 20th century. The copper mines were eventually shut down, but now it seems the industry is making a comeback. However, Broken Heart is not interesting to people just because of its copper reserves. It holds something more valuable and useful for our civilization. Scientists believe that this valley hides massive reserves of hydrogen. And this substance can help us switch to a cleaner, cheaper, and more efficient energy source. If hydrogen fuel becomes widely available, everyone will switch to it, leaving behind the costly, noisy, and polluting process of oil production. Now, I'll bet hydrogen is a remarkably familiar word to you. It doesn't sound like the discovery of the century, and people have been using it for a long time. On one hand, you're right, but not quite. 90% of the hydrogen produced by humans is used as a raw material for the chemical industry. Hydrogen is used to produce ammonia for fertilizers, methanol for fuel and solvents, and to purify crude oil. Manufacturers of glass, cement, steel, and other metals are considering using hydrogen at their factories for more efficient production. Hydrogen can become an alternative to fossil fuels, that is, oil and gasoline produced from them. Cars, ships, trains, airplanes, and power plants – all of these may switch to hydrogen soon. In this case, production can become cheaper and better for nature. But this will work only if we find open sources of hydrogen. You see, about 95% of the hydrogen we use is produced from fossil fuels. We gasify coal, oxidize hydrocarbons, and extract hydrogen from methane. All of these production methods require energy. But the worst part is that they lead to large emissions of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. But what if we find sources of pure hydrogen that don't require processing? Then we'll save energy for its production and make the planet cleaner. But where can we find such sources? Scientists say that there are many of them all over the planet, and one of the largest is located in the Rift Valley in the U.S. Midwest. But what's the problem with going and mining it? Well, it's not that simple. To extract pure hydrogen, you need three conditions. The first is the source of hydrogen itself, which is quite logical. The second is reservoir rocks, that is, natural containers where this hydrogen is stored. And the third is natural seals, which prevent the gas from escaping. In other words, these seals work like a cap on a bottle. They don't allow the substance to escape. 
So in general, it's necessary to find where hydrogen is released, where it accumulates, and where it's stored. When these conditions are met, natural resource extraction companies can start working. But how does hydrogen appear altogether? Well, let's go over the basics of chemistry. Hydrogen and oxygen compounds form water. This means you need to split the water into hydrogen and oxygen. This process often occurs in nature. There are many places all over the planet where this happens. Scientists are confident that at least 30 U.S. states have hydrogen reservoirs. And if people detect them, we will accelerate the energy transition to safer and more efficient fuels. Thousands of cars drive around using gasoline. Many of you know the smell of exhaust fumes, that thick polluted air that's hard to breathe. What about electric cars? They must be improving the situation, right? Well, here's another problem. Producing batteries for these vehicles harms nature. The materials used to make batteries are lithium, cobalt, and nickel. Their extraction involves a large release of toxic materials, not only into the air, but also into the water. Transporting these batteries also creates a large carbon footprint. Producing a single electric car emits about 4 tons of carbon dioxide. To make up for that, the owner needs to drive it for at least 8 years. That's how long it takes to offset the emissions a regular car would produce. What about reliability and convenience? What will you do if the battery runs out during the trip and there are no charging stations nearby? This problem will be solved in the future with the growing popularity of electric cars. Now, Scientists believe that over the past billion years, the Earth's crust has split enough water into hydrogen and oxygen. Our planet keeps this gas in the ground, waiting for us to start using it. According to calculations, even considering all the technologies and production capacities of our civilization, the reserves of hydrogen in the bowels of the planet are enough to supply us with energy for 170,000 years. That's why the giant rift in Kansas attracts scientists from all over the world. Huge quantities of basalt and other rocks can react with water to release hydrogen. And now scientists are looking for places where this material accumulates and is stored. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.